Okay, this is a part two. <laughs> Follow up on the last video I posted regarding this 1000mm DLG. And some people come up with some very, very good suggestions. So I thank you for those. One suggestion, the le leading suggestion was, why don't you pull the servos out of the servo tray and then try and slide the receiver underneath into this back section. So I thought, brilliant. Which way? This way. Oh, brilliant. That'll be a really good idea. So I thought I'd take out the servos. Simple enough, you might think. I've got one out. This one appears to be glued in place. Oh. Um, I've tried to get my screwdriver under there, it's just not budging. There's no way that servo's coming out. I've really, really buggered around with it for quite some time. It's, just, it's not coming out. So if you're going to buy one of these, if you still decide to buy one of these, don't get the plug and fly. Because to get your receiver in here, you're going to have to slide it under the servo tray. And if they're going to glue the damn servos in by uh, mistake or on purpose, then, you know, you're not going to be able to do it. Uh, now my decision is do I destroy this servo, I was only a cheap budget servo, in order to get the receiver through to the back there and put a different one in, or do I throw it in the trash? Well, I'm going to do my best, I'm going to just keep pulling them like this until I get the damn thing out. It probably will get destroyed in the process, but at least then I think, I think, you know, it's still not guaranteed, but I think I'll be able to slide my receiver down into the back section here, and then I can put a decent, well, a slightly bigger sized battery in the front, and we may get this thing in the air today. I'll give it a go. Okay, as I feared, um, the top of the servo has come off. There's no way I was going to get it out. It's so firmly glued. I don't know what's going on. There's glue all around the edges here. It's glued all around there. I mean, it's going to have to destroy the servo to get out. What a waste of money plug and fly was because I've had to destroy the, the extra bit. The two servos they throw in, um, one of them I've had to totally destroy it and still haven't got my way, uh, haven't got the rest of it out of the, the servo tray. Hmm. My opinion on this model is diminishing by the moment. Finally, after a great deal of farting around, I've managed to get the servo out. Obviously, it's never going to work again. And you can see around the edge here just how much glue was holding that damn servo in. It ridiculous. Why do you? Why would you glue the servo in? Because on a DLG, it's not uncommon with these little servos to strip gears and things. So, if you had use this and strip the gear. Which one is that on? That's And it's on the rudder, which is the most likely one to get stripped because it's, man, that's very stiff. Making that's a very stiff linkage. Um, it's on the rudder, so it's the one that's most likely to suffer gear damage. You'd never have got it out anyway. So I don't think I've ever been quite so disappointed with the plug and fly model as with this. I mean, I've spent now a day, well, probably a total of about 10 hours on this thing. Okay, some of it's involved in setting up the camera and getting the shots sorted out for the, the video, but Oh, and in getting it out, I've had to damage the tray itself, so, um, oh man. But hopefully now at least I will be able to slide a receiver underneath here. Although well, wouldn't it piss me off if it was actually not going to work, but I should be able to slide a receiver right in the back here and then use a decent sized battery in the front. So uh, we should look at the bright side, I suppose. Um, I'm going to have to inlay a little piece of wood in here for the new servo, if I can find one the right size. But yeah, what a shame. Totally had to munt that servo to get it out. And as you can see, it's really, it's not going to go back together. Um, right, so now I shall try and get the receiver in there. Uh, I better bind it and set the failsafe first, because once it's in there, it's not going to be accessible. But hey, that's good. I don't see anything in there that's going to impede the signal. Hoorah. And um, we'll move on. So I'm going to be using this servo. It's the D56MG from Turnergy. It's a digital servo, metal gears. and. The reason I'm using this is twofold. First of all, the, the rudder linkage, as I said before, it's really stiff. I'm surprised how stiff it is, actually. I can't see any easy way to free it up because inside the fuselage, where you can't get at it, there is a really tight radius bend that looks like it's not supposed to be there, but it is there. So when they put the push rods in, I mean, the elevator one is free as because it's a straight run, but the rudder one goes through a big kink, and that kink is actually making it hard to push and pull on the push rod. So I'm hoping this Metal Gear servo will have a bit more power and be strong enough to overcome that friction. Um, just another little point against this model. It's just a, a litany of small problems. But I will be putting this in for the rudder. Also, because the rudder is right at the back, if you do a cartwheel or something, um, or you have a bit of an accident carrying the model around, the rudder will quite easily be banged quite sharply. And that, that pressure or that force will be transferred through the pushrod to the servo. So plastic geared servos tend to strip quite easily. I've already stripped several gears on some of my other DLGs of doing cartwheels, just those very things I talked about and then you've got to replace them. So I figured we'll use a metal gear servo, should have more torque, and the gears should be more robust, so hopefully we won't have to ever replace them. Now, if you build a lot of models, here's something I really suggest you get. It's a battery, this is a 2S 
LIFE battery and a switch. These old switches, we used to use them on the old Nitro models and, and so forth, just turn the power off and on. And the, the switch plugs into the battery and then you plug your switch into your receiver, any old channel, and it enables you to turn it off and on very easy for binding purposes because it's a real pain in the backside sometimes trying to connect big battery terminals while you're holding down a bind switch on a receiver if, if you haven't got a friend to help you. So this way the switch is easily operated with one hand while you hold down the bind button with the other so you don't have to fart around. Saves hours of frustration so I'm going to use it, I'm going to bind this up now to my Tyrannus, I better make a new model on my Tyrannus, bind it up and then I can stick it in the DLG. I'll also have to set the fail safe before I put the receiver in because once it's in I won't be able to reach the fail safe bind button. So a little bit of work to do before I can mount this in the model. Right, on reflection it was probably a good idea that I had to destroy that servo because here's the one that was on the elevator and I've just plugged it in after, after binding and look, it's moving all by itself. <laughs> it's and if I put a bit of pressure on here, notice before it starts getting really spastic. I'm not doing it now. Oh yeah, there you go. It starts bouncing around and... Oh. Anyway, um, it does work. Where are we? Which one is it? See, it's nice and fast. But it's, that, that, that's the resolution of it. It's pretty crappy resolution. And yeah, rubbish. As usual with these plug and flies, the servos are usually pretty crap. But if you're going to glue them in, don't put crap servos in because people will want to change them. So yeah, here we go. I have hooked up this. This is the D, what is it, the D56MG. Much nicer servo. A little bit slower actually, but not that important on a DLG. But it's rock solid, very smooth, good resolution as you can see from this. So I'll have to see if I can find another server like this that's similar because I'm just not going to bother putting this little trembling, you know, nervous wreck of a servo in there. That would be just a waste of time. So yeah, from bad things, good things come. Okay, so now I'm looking at the servo I'm going to use for the elevator. And this little Tenergy, it seems to work really well. It's just solid, no jitters, good torque. Not as fast as some of the others, but it's got good holding power and, you know, I like it. It's good. I only have one of these, unfortunately. I bought a few of these little servos to try out. So now I'm trying out a blue arrow. I don't know what the number is. Um, what is it? D050 or something? I can't read it. Oh, D0 or 05. Here, I've got the packet here. That might be a bit of... No, that's a different packet. Here's the packet. Goodness me. Um, it is... Oh, it doesn't say on the packet. Oh, yeah, D05... 010MG. So it's a metal geared servo, which is, you know, might as well put metal gears in here. And it's got a bit of slop. And it actually, when you push it, it actually overreacts. Over but I mean, that's not bad. But the problem I've got with this servo is, see if I can get the transmitter in. I have to go zoom out a bit to get the transmitter in view as well. Um, and this transmitter's just got oh, slow zoom. Come on, come on, come on, come on, hurry up. Um, this transmitter is set with 100% endpoints. So it's what you would. Um, normally run. Now as you can see I moved the stick. That's nice and smooth and fine. When I get to the other end here there's quite a bit of a dead band at the end. It doesn't go all the way. I mean come on it goes all the way this way. But this way? No. And other servos I've tried on here do to have the full throw. Oh man. Can't people make a small, decent small servo? I mean Turnergy does. Why can't? Um, Blue Arrow. Now I've tried some others. I've had some other ones sitting here. I've got the good old HX500, but it's way too big for this application. It's way too wide to fit in there, so I can't use the HX500. Um, what else did I look at? I had another one here, um, a little orange one, but it had the wrong connectors on it. And I've got another one here. This is an H, what was it? HD power servo. This one here is an HD65, but again, it's too wide. It's not going to fit in because it's way too wide. Oh, man. What a disaster. If I'd known that I, I would just buy these. I, I'm going to buy some more of these. These look really good. I'll give them a thorough thrashing. So this might turn into a test of the D56MG servo. But uh, I'll just keep scraping through the, the barrel here and see if I can find, because the other one I tried, yeah, that was this one, another blue arrow servo. This one here. Um, got it still, in, one still in the bag. I'll buy two of everything in case one does make it. It's the B16573, according to it. It's a catalogue number or something. It says something else on the box. Hold on, just put my granny glasses on and I'll share this with you. It is actually the S03614, but it has these little, the other little connectors on it and I can't be bothered changing them. And it's only a plastic geared servant. It has really, really small shaft, so 
probably not really suitable for DOGs. Oh, this is a really big job, this model. It's the biggest build I've had for bloody months. Never mind, continue. My only other concern is that this servo may be a little too tall. It's quite a tall servo, as you can see. I'm hoping that it, the arm won't bang on the hatch, but nah, it's all I had. This one's a bit shallower, um, so yeah. But we'll try it out and see. If worst comes to worst, well, we know we have to modify the hatch or something, but uh, it's, a, it's a, bit of a bit of a shame, this glider, because I've had to do so much work just to get it supposed to be plug and fly. Who was dreaming when they put that description on the on the uh, product information sheet. Good news! After many, many hours of farting around, ripping stuff out, putting stuff back in, testing stuff, trying to get stuff to work, I finally got the receiver in here, two new servos, Metal Gear digital servos, and my big two cell lithium battery in there, and a tiny UBEC here, which is one I've um, potted in liquid tape. It's very small. So finally, finally, I have it all there and I'll be able to squish this down. I'll make sure these wires are out of the way. And the, the case, the, the cover just, just fits. So, and best of all, I don't have the tailplane on at the moment, but look where the CG is. It's actually forward of the right position. So when I put the tailplane on, because I haven't glued that in place yet, I didn't want to get any all butter, you know, bent and twisted while I was playing around with the rest of it. With the tailplane on, oh, it perfectly balances on the CG, look at that. Oh, the wing, of course, will make that uh, change a little, but oh, oh, I'm so happy. Um, look at that. Um, I wonder what it weighs now. Let's put the magic scales on here. Oh, I've lost them under the clutter on my bench. Let's see what the front of this thing was. Put them on sideways, because otherwise, uh, oh, I'll stand it on its end. Probably the best way to do it. Let's have a look. What have we come up with? Oops, it always takes two turns to turn that on. If I can get this in here, this is the fuselage with the tail 78, oh no, depends how you weigh it, 78 grams, 79, about 80 grams, about 80 grams um, with, now only the only other extra thing to go on here is the wing, woohoo, and what is the wing weigh again? I've forgotten, but anyway, it's going to be about 100 and, 120 grams, 130 grams, that's not too bad, and I, I hoping, I'm hoping I won't have to put any nose weight in it because of the way I've managed to jiggle this all around. What a mission! What a mission! Well, I'll tidy a few bits and pieces up now, and if I find anything else, I shall add it to the video. But it's almost looking like we might have this in the air today. Woohoo! Well, it's been a long, hard road, but look, da da, done, finished, completed, and everything fits, and uh, everything lines up. I've got the uh, two cell lipo in the nose, I've got the receiver behind or just under the wing there. Uh, I've got a tiny UBEC, which I covered in plastic tape and everything ready to go 140 grams 140 grams so it, it, it's it's you know it's 40 percent heavier than my other one for an extra 50 millimeters of wingspan so i don't think it's really going to be that crash hot but hey you know out here you can throw your toolbox up and it will soar in the thermals now it's pretty late in the day and i'm pretty hot you see sweating oh it's been a really hot day here so um what i'm going to do is I'm going to go home and render up this video so you can see the trials and tribulations that i went through to get this thing completed this is not a plug and play model honestly this is not if you're going to buy one of these don't buy the plug and play buy the one that has the servo tray not yet installed so you can put your receiver behind the wing or under the wing and then you can put your servos in and you're not wasting money on those crap ass servos which really really were rubbish servos and all the hassles involved in trying to make this fit now the cg is pretty close it's actually about mm, eight millimeters behind the mark but i like a real wood cg um, so I'll fly it like that, test fly it like that, and just see whether it's going to require any nose weight. If it does, then pff, I guess I'll just have to put some in. But in the meantime, yeah, um, this is, I, th I bought the plug and fly because I thought, oh, nice, quick and easy, get it up in the air. But if I total up my hours, including the camera work, I suppose, adds to it, but if I total up my hours, this was probably about an eight hour build, an eight hour build for a plug and fly, that's ridiculous. Um, most of Hobby King's other plug and fly stuff is really great. You know, just a couple of screws, bolts, like the one, the, the built up version or the 950mm DLG. It's like 10 minutes to get that in the air. Eight hours? Come on, you're kidding me. This is not plug and fly. This is punishment. Unusual, harsh and unusual punishment. So now I'm going to put it aside for the rest of the day, um, go home, have something to eat. And when I come back, hopefully tomorrow, uh, trouble is where do I fly it? 
Where do I fly? Back with the same old problems. Where do I fly? It's over 100 grams. What can I do to fly this? It's got, the farm is covered, it is filled with maize. Um, I just have to go and drive along the road and find somewhere I can throw it beside the road. I mean, it's ridiculous. It's, apparently it's going to be safer. It's going to be safer than flying it within four kilometres of the airfield. <sighs> you know, or at the airfield or in a park. No, not possible. There you go. Um, thanks for watching. Questions, comments in the usual place. And now I will, uh, I'm going to go back to the fridge. Bye for now.